Jesus tonight. Amen. Hear me tonight, church. Amen. This world that we live in is in a transition. You listen to Christian radio and you hear about churches without walls. We're tearing down the walls. I mean, I'm going to preach to you like it's my church tonight. Hey Amen. There's a reason why there's walls. Because if there's no walls, there's no need for a watchman to be on the wall. Hey Amen. And God has placed a, a man of God. God has placed a, a watchman on the wall. Therefore, there's got to be a wall. We're not like everybody else. We're not like every other church. Hey Amen. We don't dress like other people dress. We don't worship like other people worship. Give me my walls. Give me my identity. Give me Jesus. Oh, but everybody, they want to grow it. But Enrique, they want to grow it. But let me tell you something. Hey, Amen. When you look at a light switch, there's only two options. You turn it up, it goes on. When you push it down, it goes off. That's it. Hey, Amen. It's white or black when it comes for living for Jesus. Hey, Amen. But everybody wants to dwindle the power of Jesus. Hey, Amen. We all want to be friends. I want to be your friend. Hey, Amen. But more than want to be your friend, I want to make sure that I make heaven my home. I want to make sure that I hear the word of God, my good and faithful servant. Because I can make new friends in heaven. But I don't get a second chance in heaven. Amen. I mean, people want to talk about the blood and say that it's not as important as it used to be. Amen. They want to take it and they want to dress it down to where it seems like it's just a little trickle, just a little brook. Amen. Just a little stream. But hear me today. This word is the living word of God. Because from the day that it was etched upon this paper, amen, it is still alive today. And nowhere do I find that the blood of Jesus, amen, is a creek. I don't find, amen, where it's a trickle, but I find where it is a river. Of living water. It is a river of living water. Amen. And I'm thankful tonight for that blood. I'm thankful tonight for who I am. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. I'm a tongue talking, all running. Amen. Because I've been saved where I was the Lord. Amen. I've been blood bought. And I'm thankful tonight for his price. Amen. Let me just say it while I'm here before we get into the scriptures tonight. Amen. We go out and we witness and we ask people to come to church. And people say, well, I don't want to come to church because all y'all ask for is money. But it doesn't bother them when they come to ask for money. But let me tell you something. Yeah, it takes money. But let me tell you, if we gathered up all the wealth that's in this building, and we went down and we cast it all into gold bullion, and it wouldn't be a patch job on the streets of gold. It wouldn't accumulate to nothing. Amen. And when you want to talk about a church that all they want to talk about is money, friend, I don't want your money. Amen. Because the greatest price that has ever been paid was paid on Calvary's cross. Amen. The greatest price that will ever be paid was paid with blood. Amen. Hear me today, church. I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus don't need your money. Man, if you want to be an Ebenezer Scrooge, that's fine. Because reality is, Brother Bogart, we don't need their money. Because my God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Oh, man, what, what the pastor's trying to keep you in is he's trying to keep you in the funnel of blessing. Amen. And by encouraging you in giving. Amen. Well, it keeps that channel open. That God can keep pouring out. Amen. That God, well, I don't have the money. Hey, well, Jesus didn't have to hang on the cross either, but he did. Give it anyways. And watch God multiply. Amen. I'm not here to talk about money. That was for free. Amen. But if you have your Bibles tonight, let's turn to the book of 2 Timothy. Amen. I want to say tonight, what an honor, what an honor it is to be with Peace Tabernacle. 
tonight in this wonderful place. Amen. Great spirit of the Lord that we felt in this place this morning. Amen. Coming back tonight again, we feel the miraculous moving of God in this place. Amen. I don't know what you came expecting tonight. And let me be really honest with you. I don't know what I came expecting tonight. But what I did was I come expecting that God was going to move. Amen. Because if we come and we don't just sit it here, well, I'm, if I don't get this, then I'm not touched. If this doesn't happen, then it wasn't God. Hey, let me tell you, put, put your Holy Ghost thermostat away. Your thermometer, I mean. Put that away. Amen. And let's just say we're here tonight to let God be God. Amen. To let God move as he sees fit. Amen. Because I do believe tonight that God wants to move. Amen. If you have your Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 4, going to read a very familiar, very familiar passage of Scripture. Amen. And I'm not going to take time, but the bum has already done all that, but I do want to thank my mom and my grandmother for being here, mom and dad for being here. But most of all, I want to thank Jesus for being here tonight. Amen. Because if we would be absent of Jesus, this would be nothing more than a country club, a gathering place, a civic center. Amen. But we're here tonight and we feel his miraculous moving hand. Amen. And I do believe that he is not finished with us yet. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 4. We're going to pick up with verse number 7. And it says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all of that, most important is, I kept the faith. Amen. Hey, church, hear me today. If we don't keep the faith, we're going to fall short when that trumpet blows. Amen. Because the faith, the belief, amen, that redeeming power is what's going to get us there. Amen. And then before you're seated tonight, if you will, one of my most favorite, favorite passages of Scripture. Turn to the book of Hebrews. Man, I, I, I don't know about you, but I love the Word of God. I, I love the Word of God. It, it, it never ceases to amaze me throughout all the years of all the passages that I've read. I go back and I read, reread pack passages of Scripture, and it's like God begins to talk to me in a totally different way. Man, now let me tell you why that is. It's because, again, I've already said this, but it is the living Word of God. Amen. We don't see the pages moving in and out as we would see our chest when we begin to breathe. But let me tell you today, this has been ordained by God. Amen. And this is what's going to get us to heaven. It is the living Word of God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, and we'll start with verse number 1. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, and verse number 1. The Bible reads as follows, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such, so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth eat so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin, the sin which does so easily beset us and lay us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Before we're seated tonight, we're going to ask the pastor if he would to pray over this message that God would have his way and minister to our hearts tonight. Lord, we thank you for being in the house tonight. What a mighty move of your spirit we have already felt. Lord, we thank you for every anointed song. Now we ask you to anoint your word. And Lord, anoint the lips of clay that speak your word and anoint our ears to hear, Lord. Bring understanding to our mind that we might grow closer to you. And we thank you, Lord, for that tonight. In Jesus' name. And the church say amen. Amen. Hey, amen. You can be seated tonight. 
I mean, as you're seated, let me, if you will, let me just set a very small stage tonight. But in your reading in Hebrews chapter 12, we, I read to you verse number 1 where it talks about we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. But as we read the Bible, we see that the Bible is chopped up into chapters and verses. But to, fear, to really truly grasp what chapter 12 verse number 1 is speaking about, you have to go back and actually go back into uh, chapter 11 and it's talking about those great people of faith. It talks about people like Moses and Joshua. It talks about people like Abraham. It even speaks of people like Samson and David, amen, and Gideon, these great people of faith. And, and it would seem as if they started the chapter 12 where they actually maybe should have ended chapter 11 because as they begin to talk about all of these great heroes of faith, then verse number 1 of chapter 12, which I just read to you, says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Who is that cloud of witnesses? I'll tell you who that cloud is. We find them in chapter 11 of the same book of Hebrews. Amen. Great people, heroes of our faith. Many of us, if you've been in church any length of time, you know these great people. You know these heroes of faith. Amen. And we have we've we've done Bible studies on them. We've been in Sunday school on them. Uh, we sung Father Abraham. I've sung Father Abraham until I th thought I'd thrown pieces of my body out of whack. Amen. But we had a great time singing Father Father Abraham. Man, we, we've heard of Gideon and we know the great battle that Gideon won. There were just a, a handful of men. Started out with some 30 plus thousand men. Man, and then God brought a great victory with 300. Let me tell you tonight, uh, and, and, and I'm not going to, I'm going to try my best to stay with what God has placed upon my heart, but let me say this tonight. It's not all about the numbers. It's not all about uh, the numbers. God did an amazing thing with Gideon and his 300 men. Amen. Hear me today. Amen. We all I want numbers because we're trying to reach uh, into the very belly of hell and to pull souls out. Uh, but let us not get so caught up with numbers uh, that we lose the true cause and the calling uh, of what God has placed us here for. And that is to be faithful and to be a witness to a lost world. Man, I'm fearful today. I'm fearful that people get so caught up with numbers that they lose their vision. They lose their track. They lose uh, the plan that God has put before them. And, and some would say, well, it's easy for you to say because you're a small church. And, and let me say this tonight. And, and I, maybe uh, they say confession is good for the soul, which is always a dangerous thing. But let me say this to you tonight. Amen. When I got voted in almost six years ago, amen, we, there was a very small group of people people that voted me and my family in. There was one or two things that happened that night and I still uh, in the past six years have not been able to figure out what it is. It was one or two things. Either they were drunk on the new wine or they just didn't have any sense. But yet in spite of it all they voted us in. Sometimes it's a coin toss but yeah here we went. And we started off, and, and there were some 13 people that vote that were there that were voting. I wish that I could say to you tonight that all wanted to vote for me, but that would not be true. But there was enough, amen, to turn the tide. And so it was that we started off on a venture, amen, trusting in God and believing that God was going to do something great in our midst. Has it been easy? Absolutely not. And I found myself uh, as a young pastor of a small church. People say, oh, you're a pastor. And, and Brother Thomas, I'd say, yeah, I pastor a small church in Eufaula. And I did that for several years. And finally, amen, I, one day I was fixing to say it. And it was almost, some of y'all remember this, when you were fixing to say something, and Mama already knew what you were fixing to say, and she was already ready. And it was like it was coming from your stomach, but before it ever made, to, made it to your lips, it was like, don't even shut your mouth. And I was fixing to introduce myself uh, as Reverend Ricky Fleming, uh, the pastor of a small church in Eufaula, Oklahoma. And it wasn't Mama that day, but it was God Almighty. And it was almost like I just felt just that slap upside my lips. He said, don't you say it. Come on, come on, come on. 
And so now what I tell everybody, I say, I'm Pastor Ricky Fleming of a growing church in Eufaula, Oklahoma. And I leave it at that. Because you know, again, it's not all about the numbers. We're growing in faith. We're growing in hope. We're growing in, tr in trust and love of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're growing in wisdom and understanding in accordance uh, to the Word of God. But in the midst of all that, we are growing in number. So it was just last week, man, that we had a service. And we were doing it together and we just did some service changes. And when you do service changes and time changes as a pastor, you just cross your finger and hope for the best. And so when it was all said and done with, we were leaving out and, and I was with one of my daughters. I said, you know what, I think we actually had a pretty good crowd. And we were sitting, <clears throat> we were sitting there in the drive through line. We had had some roast and potatoes and carrots put into the oven. And the last few weeks it's been my job to cook the rolls. And I'm going to tell you something. I have perfected roll making. I'm going to tell you. There's a little chicken house on the edge of town. And I just pull up in there and I can get a dozen for $5.43. I already know the tax. Yeah. I run back to the house. I throw some powder on my, some flour on my face and on the front of my shirt. Open up my styrofoam platter and bring them to the table like, here, I did my part. Here's my homemade rolls. But while we were sitting in that line, we began to count off the families of who was there last Sunday. And I'm thankful because we're no longer a small church, but we're a growing church. Man. Brother Enrique, we counted... Sit, it was 53 people on a Sunday morning. Amen. Not because what pastor's doing, but because what God is doing in the house. Amen. Because God is moving in the house. Man, there have been times that I've, I've laid awake at night and the enemy has battled against me. The enemy has told me, you're crazy. Go back to a bigger city. Go back to a bigger town. Amen. They're, gonna, they're just going to drain you dry. You're, 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 you're playing against a stacked deck. Just don't do it. Man, but I get up. And every morning I, I get in my truck and I, I'm on my car, whichever I'm driving that day. And, and I go and there's been many at times and many of you that are seasoned saints, you'll understand what this is. You get in that vehicle and you begin to talk to God Almighty. And then all of a sudden the presence of the Holy Ghost uh, begins to move into that vehicle and tears begin to roll down your face. Uh, you're sitting in traffic hour. You're sitting in, in, in bumper to bumper traffic and people look over at you and tears rolling down your face. And they say, oh, that poor individual they must have gotten a fight before they left. They got a mean husband or they got a mean wife. But what they don't understand, it's not a mean wife or a mean husband, but it's the glory of the Almighty God. Amen. That is coming to that vehicle and begins to minister to the mind, the heart, and the soul. And so it is. Amen. There's been many a times and many a days, amen, that I have spent with the Lord and saying, God, I can't do this by myself. Uh, you got to help me. You got to direct me. Amen. People say, well, we're praying. We're praying that God sends you helpers. Uh, we're praying that God will send you workers. Uh, hey, I'm going to tell you, I've even had to reevaluate that. I don't want somebody else's workers. Because you know what? There are some occasions that people leave churches because they got their feelings hurt. And I don't need them coming and working in our church. Amen. I, I don't want people coming into our church and all I hear them say, well, when I was at so-and-so, and when I was at so-and-so, hey, look here, Toto, you ain't in Kansas anymore. Come on, brother. Come on. Some of y'all understand that. Some of that is like... Phew. Because you're at the POE now. You're at the Pentecostals of your father. Amen. And, and we don't do 
everything like everybody else did. I, I, I'll tell you that. We just, we just go. Sometimes my wife looks at me and says, what are we doing? I said, I don't have no idea, but we're doing something. Amen. But I begin to pray, God, I, 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 you know what? I'm thankful for those that have come and helped. And don't misunderstand Brother Fleming tonight. I'm thankful for those that have come. But you know what I've been praying? I'm saying, God, raise those up. Give me those that have never taught a Sunday school class. Give me those that have never drove a Sunday school bus. Amen. Well, they get into this thing and they're fresh off the street. Amen. They, they're fresh off in their sinners and they're washed by the blood divide and they say, Pastor, what can I do for the kingdom? Hey Amen. You give me a baby that's hungry, I'll give you a revival. You give me a baby that's willing to do something for God, I'll show you a harvest in the Holy Ghost. Hey Amen. I'm, I'm trying to pastor a church. Hey Amen. Not trying to counsel crybabies. Hey man, I'm just saying, give me somebody that's new. You give me somebody that hasn't been in this thing for 30 or 40 years, and they start off with, well, I'll tell you, I don't want you to tell me. Please don't misunderstand me when I say this. I don't need you to tell me I'm the pastor. I'll throw it out there, and if it's wrong, I'll take care of it with him. Well, everybody's entitled to be wrong, and tonight's your night if you don't agree with it. Come on, brother. It is what it is. But let me say to you tonight, just a few weeks ago I was driving with the girls and we were talking. They had some friends that went to Mount Rushmore. We've been planning a trip. We've been discussing this trip, and we've been wanting to go and have not been able to go to Mount Rushmore. And so we, as I was driving, uh, I was doing what I was not supposed to do. They were looking at pictures and they say, hey dad, look at this. I can't, I'm driving. Oh yeah, that's cool, yeah. <laughs> and we began to talk about Mount Rushmore and, I, and Tierra had said, you know, she goes, dad, I, I think that you can go up and that you can get in behind the faces of Mount Rushmore and please uh, don't chastise me when I say this, but you know, sometimes when you're with your kids, you just say stuff. I'm just a dad. And I thought, and I told her this. And I said, you know what? That would be so awesome to go up in, behind the faces because, I mean, how many people can honestly say, I picked George Washington's nose? Just <laughs> saying. <laughs> but then Tierra said but dad if you could see through their eyes if you could see through the eyes of greatness and tonight by the help and grace of God I want to preach to you from my heart looking through the eyes of greatness looking through the eyes of greatness you see, tonight, even as we are here and we have worshipped, we have marched around this church, we have shouted, we have lifted our hands, we have strained our voices and magnified the Lord, let me say to you tonight that we have not done it only with what we see in this place tonight. But there is tonight a great cloud of of witnesses. Amen. That has looked upon what has been done in this place tonight. And I believe in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That they are satisfied with what has gone on in Peace Tabernacle tonight. Amen. That we have magnified the name of the Most High. That we have opened ourselves up to receive His direction and to receive the moving of His Spirit. I believe tonight Amen. That we are not living this thing alone. Amen. But there are those. Amen. That unction by God, that there are angels that are moving around by the direction and by the order of God, amen, that are going before us and making the crooked way straight. I believe tonight that there are angels, amen, that are into your tomorrow and into your next week, and if God delays your coming into your next years, amen, that if you will just be faithful, amen, and you'll say, I don't know what's 
around the corner, but by faith, I'm moving forward through the eyes of greatness. I'm trusting in God. Amen. I begin to think about those four presidents uh, that are on the side of Mount Rushmore. And as I begin to study them, I did not understand, but I do now, that they were actually placed in the order that they were placed in by design. The first president that you see when you come in and is facing, uh, he is, if you're looking at it, is on the far left side, but he is looking straight on, and he is the first one that you see will be President George Bush. I mean, George Bush. He's got my vote. But George Washington, I apologize. Y'all can tell I am from Texas. I only live in Oklahoma. Amen. I got Lone Star blood running through my veins. But George Washington, he is the first one you see. He is, actually sits out a little bit uh, in front of the other three presidents. We know who George Washington is. He is the father of of this nation. Before he became the president, he was our great general as we began to fight against the tyranny, amen, of Great Britain. Hear me tonight. Man, in a lot of ways, as we look in our history, we will find that there are spiritual similarities. That, that even today, that we are fighting against the oppressive spirit of tyranny. A man that is trying to silence the church. That is trying to quiet and say, hey, if y'all going to do your thing, that's fine. But just go in the corner and do your thing. A man, there is Christianity as a whole, as I've already said tonight, that is trying to broadcast across. Uh, uh, our radios and, and, and our podcast and all this other stuff. Hey, let's tear down the walls and, and let's all be friends. Uh, let's just tear down the walls and, and, and let's just all worship God together. Hear me tonight, church. Uh, that is not acceptable in the eyes of God. Uh, amen. But I'm thankful tonight for leaders uh, that are stand to the forefront uh, that are battling against the tyranny of just whitewashing everything uh, and saying, hey, we can all be friends, but I'm thankful today for the elders. I thank for the day for the pioneers that saw through the eyes of greatness and said we are going to battle against this tyranny and we will have the liberty through the Holy Ghost. Man, if you look at American history, you will find that during the colonial battle, Man, that America was far outnumbered from Great Britain, but yet there was a cause. Let me say that tonight, there was a cause. And tonight in this house, uh, there is a cause uh, for battle. There is a cause uh, to, to be put on the whole armor of God. Uh, there is a cause uh, to step to the line and be counted. Uh, amen. There is a cause uh, for victory. Amen. Outnumbered outmanned. Amen. General George Washington pushed his troops on. When some wanted to give up, amen, he did his best to encourage them and they pushed on. Yes, towards the end of the Revolutionary War, we were assisted by France, but in large part, amen, it was General George Washington and his uh, cabinet that kept this thing together. The battles that were fought, those that lost their life, oh, but through the eyes of greatness. General Washington said, this battle is worth winning. This fight is worth fighting for. There is a greater cause. There is a greater country that we are trying to birth, and we're going to fight. When we finally got our independence and we won that battle, there was no other great choice but yet President George Washington. It is noted that he is the father of this great nation. Amen. And pinned upon the early documents of this nation, you will find the words of God. Yes. Trust. Yes. Equality. Yes. Amen. Because through the eyes of greatness. Amen. He saw beyond 17, 
hundred. And he saw 2017. Amen. And tonight, I know we're in the Pentecostal church and I know that God is moving, but tonight, amen, I'm thankful that we're able together in the greatest nation under this world, second only to Israel because they are, they are God's children. But I'm thankful tonight, amen, that I am an American. I'm thankful tonight for our men and women, amen, that have fought and continue to fight to keep those liberties for you and I. Man, it's so through the eyes of greatness a nation was formed and birthed. Hey, man, directly next to George Washington is the president number three, Thomas Jefferson, who was a president of the great United States between 1801 and 1809. Hey, man, he was the principal author of the Declaration of the Declaration of Independence. In large part, it was his pen his thoughts of that great declaration. Through his leadership, we had the largest growth in this nation. In 1803, when we had the Louisiana Purchase, some 15 states of the common day United States came through that purchase of the Louisiana Purchase. All or some of 15 states came in 1803 under the direction of uh, President Jefferson, I mean Thomas Jefferson, through the eyes of greatness, Amen. He wanted to reach beyond the limits. He wanted to reach into the West, where everybody said, "Hey, we've got the thirteen colonies. Let's just stay here." Oh no, no. President Jefferson said, "But what is on the other side of the mountain?" Amen. And so it is through the eyes of greatness. He said, we're going to stretch our hand where it's never been before. We are going to extend ourselves. Amen. And today I'm thankful that now we stretch from sea to sea. Amen. That we stretch from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And why is that? Because there were men in our early days, amen, that saw through the eyes of greatness that they didn't fall prey to those that says, well, I don't think we can. I think it's a bad idea. Do you know what is around the corner but yet they look beyond they look beyond the situation they look beyond the trouble they look beyond the naysayers and they said I don't know what may become of it but through the eyes of greatness I'm going to reach and I'm going to hope the third president that would somewhat see him as he sits in the shadows will be our 26th president President Theodore Roosevelt who was the president between 1901 and 1909. Man, this guy was a unique individual. He wasn't like most of us. He came from a well-to-do Dutch family. He didn't have to sign up for everything that he did. But yet there was something that he saw through the eyes of greatness. Amen, and he turned away from the family wealth and he joined the Navy and when the Spanish and American War started he left his naval post became a rough rider and many of us know that he became a hero of the rough riders during the Spanish American War came back became vice president later became president and during his term as president he helped to stabilize the financial uh, status of this great nation. During that time was a turn of the century. He was a revolutionary in business. And so it was that his goal was to make things fair for everybody. As a matter of fact, his big thing was called the square deal. Where he wanted to put caps on monopolies. He started the great... Uh, Panama Canal, and then finally, man, he began to expand the navy of this great nation before the end of his presidency. Little did he know what was around the corner. Little did he know that World War I was around the corner. But through the eyes of greatness, he said, if we're going to be a mighty nation, we can't only be a mighty nation financially. 
Amen. But we've got to be a mighty nation that can protect themselves. And so it was that Theodore Roosevelt was not only a money man, not only was he a man of equality, but yet he was a man that says, hey, we got to put on our armor. we got to be prepared. And so it is that he is the third president that we find on the wall. Lastly, we find one of my favorite presidents, the 16th president in this great nation, Abraham Lincoln. <clears throat> if you look at Abraham Lincoln, he is in direct contrast to the life of Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt graduated from Harvard. Theodore Roosevelt, we could say it tonight, had a silver spoon in his mouth. He was from a wealthy family. President Lincoln was self-educated. When he tried to make his mark in society, he kept falling flat on his face time and time again, but yet through persistence, he finally got a toehold in society. He finally found something that he could step up on, but yet it was not an easy road. He finally made it into the Senate, although a lot of people didn't like him because he thought different from everybody else. His way was foreign to them. His mindset was foreign to everybody else. And so yet he was a part of them, but yet he wasn't a part of them. You know, understand what I'm talking about today? Yeah. But yet we find him as the President of the United States through one of the biggest turbulence that this nation has ever faced. We find President Lincoln right in the middle of the Civil War. Matter of fact, when President Lincoln was voted in as president, before he could pack his bags and make it to the White House, seven of the southern states pulled out of the Union before he could even move in to the White House. How about taking that job, anybody? Nuh uh. Me neither. And from there, it just began to go downhill and downhill. But you know what? It wasn't only the, battle, the, the, the things that were transpiring on the battlefield, but even within the White House and within the cabinets, within the Congress and the Senate, there was, there was political battles that were going on. He was not just worried about what was going on on the battlefield. He was battling even some of his own peers. While there was a wedge being driven between this young nation through the eyes of greatness there was a man that said I can't do it by myself oh but to a God that is able amen and today we are still together and now we are the second greatest nation in this world why? because there were men that have gone before us that through the eyes of greatness and through a just hand of God that have made this nation what it is today amen and I'm thankful today I'm thankful for those men Mighty men. I'm thankful for those men. Amen. That through the eyes of greatness, they didn't see America for what it was, but they saw America for what it could be. Yes. And so tonight, amen, we have heroes of this nation. There's more. I could go all night. I love history. I could talk all night. Amen, of how we got to where we are. But tonight, amen, I, I wanted to use those men as illustrations because upon the walls of Mount Rushmore, any of us can go and we can see those. But tonight, I'm asking you this. Where do you fit on the walls of Peace Tabernacle? Where do you fit on the walls of Peace Tabernacle? Are you looking through the eyes of greatness? How is your vision fogged by circumstances and naysayers? Are you so caught up with what people say you have to accept? Or can you be like those that we find in Hebrews chapter 11? Like the great presidents that I've already talked about today and others that we can mention tonight that didn't become overwhelmed with circumstances and situations of the present but yet they looked not at what was right there but through the eyes of greatness they began to look in a far sight they began to look amen to the hills from which cometh the help they began to look on the horizon and say hey hey weeping may endure for the night oh but there's a sunrise on the horizon there's a sunrise and through the eyes of greatness. I'm going to keep striving through the eyes of greatness.
weakness. I'm going to keep trusting in God. And there is going to be joy that comes. There's going to be a sunrise. Hear me today. There's somebody in this place tonight uh, that you've been struggling. Amen. But you didn't want pastor to know. There's some of you that have been battling, but you didn't want the ministry staff to know. Hear me tonight. Uh, I've come under the unction of the Holy Ghost uh, to tell you, quit looking in the mirror, but look through the eyes of greatness uh, and let God lead you and let God guide you. Amen, that through the eyes of greatness all things are possible. Amen. That through the eyes of greatness all things are possible. Amen, Abraham was asked by God to leave everything behind. To leave his family behind. And to follow after a God. He said, leave it all behind and follow me. And so it was that him and his wife, his belongings, began to follow after God. Yes, Lot went with them. I'm not going to discuss that in this message tonight. But yet they left the family. They left Ur and began to follow after the voice of God. In the midst of that, God says, I, from your seed, I am going to make a great nation. Moses, I'm sorry, Abraham, where are you going? I don't know. I'm just going wherever God tells me to go. So, are y'all moving today? We might, I don't know. I'm waiting on Abraham to tell me. So who tells him? God. He'll just come in and say, hey, we're going to be leaving in the next few days. Y'all pack everything together. Well, where are you going? I don't know. We're following after the voice of God. Oh, I couldn't live like that. Think about it, church. People begin to talk about your life and they go, oh, I couldn't live like that. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. I, I, I couldn't dress like that. Mm -mm, I couldn't do that. Let me tell you something. If you can't dress like that and you can't live like that, you don't get the blessings like that. Yeah. Because Abraham and Sarah, they, they live like that. And because they live like that, they got a promise like that. Man, and they had the hurdles. They had the snares. They had the pitfalls. They had them all. Amen. They become old. They were getting old. It was almost Winnebago season for them. And God said, hey, you remember that promise? I'm going to give you that seed. There's going to be a great nation that comes through you. Lord, you sure? I mean, she looks good to me, but that old great mare, she ain't what she used to be. And this old mule ain't what he used to be either. Hear me tonight, but through God all things. Through God all things are possible. Amen. And all of a sudden there's an Isaac. There's a seed. There's a promise. You see, through the eyes of greatness, he just trusted in God. And he just began to follow after him. Where you go? I ain't got no idea, but I'm going to get me a son out of this. I'm going to get me a nation out of this. I'm going to be blessed out of this. Where are you going? I, I don't know, but I, I'm looking through the eyes of greatness. I, I, I'm looking through the eyes of greatness, not what today holds, uh, but what is around tomorrow. Uh, what does tomorrow hold? I, I'm following after the voice of God. And when life was going good, all of a sudden God said, I want you to sacrifice not just any sacrifice, but I want your son, your only son. Huh? What? Now, Lord, I'm working on, 
I'm working on getting my face carved on the wall. What do you mean you want my son? My only son. Lord, I, they're working on my... I'm getting a nose job right now, Lord. You want my son? Abram, I want your son, your only son. Okay. Whatever, God. Hey, Mama. Hey, me and the boy, we're going to be gone for a couple of days. We're going to go. We're going to give a sacrifice to God. Come on, son, let's go. Where are we going, Dad? We're going to go sacrifice, son. Yes. But, Dad, where's the sacrifice? Yes. Through the eyes of greatness. Great. Hear me today. I love God. I'm thankful for what He's done in my life. Amen. And I hope that I have that faith and that trust. Amen. But I got two beautiful girls. Hey, let me be honest with you. I think I'd struggle with it far more than Abraham did. He said, don't worry about it, son. God's going to provide. Dad? Dad, are you sure? Because if we ain't got the lamb, then we ain't got much of a sacrifice. This journey's in vain, son. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, son. God. God's going to provide. Dad, what, son? Are we there yet? Yes, son. We're fixing to get everything together. We're going to head up to the mountain. Dad, I know what you've been telling me, but Dad, we ain't got a lamb. Don't worry about it, son. God's going to provide. Through the eyes of greatness, He was willing to put that promised seed upon the altar. That through the eyes of greatness, He was willing to do what common sense said don't do. Amen. That common sense was screaming in between the ears of Abraham and saying, don't! This doesn't make any sense. You and Sarah are too old to have more kids. This is your only son. This, is, this doesn't make any sense. Abraham, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And his son is asking him, where is the sacrifice? Common sense is telling him, this is not going to work. But yet through his lips comes God will provide. We read in the Bible, they begin to put the sacrifice together. They begin to prepare everything. He said, son... Son, God's going to provide. God's going to provide. Get up there, son. Dad, are you sure? Son, get up there. God's going to provide. Hear me tonight, church. I, I've thought about this for days. That that promise... You, look, it wasn't just His own flesh and blood that was laid on that altar. It was His promise of a nation. It wasn't just a child that was laying on that altar. But it was a nation that was laying on that altar. He said, God, I'm willing to sacrifice my face being on the wall. I'm willing to sacrifice being labeled with those of faith in chapter 11. I'm willing to sacrifice a nation 
to show my love to you and my obedience to your voice. Church, hear me tonight. It was far more than just a son. It was a promise and a nation. He pulls that knife and he begins to take his son's life all tonight. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Oh, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Well, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Because he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Oh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. oh, son. Oh, I've seen enough. I've seen enough, son. I've seen what I needed to see. Here's your sacrifice, son. Get my nation. Get my nation. Get my nation off of that altar. Get my nation. Get my people. Get my people off of that altar, son. Here's your sacrifice. Through the eyes of greatness. Through the eyes of greatness. Abraham said he's an on time. He's an on time. He's an on time God. Oh, he's going to make a way where there seemeth to be no way. Oh, church, we're serving an on time God. Oh, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. We find David, a ruddy old shepherd's boy. God tells the man of God, Samuel, the next king. It's coming from the house of Jesse. He said, go to the house of Jesse and I'm going to show you who the next king of Israel, my nation, that was on the altar. I got a king for him. So the man of God comes into the house of Jesse. He says, the next king's coming from your house. Line them up. Oh, from my house? I'm going on the wall. One of my boys is fixing to be king. Come on, boys. Come on, hurry. Hurry. We're serving impatient. God, get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Come on. Here they are. <laughs> Take a look at them. Yeah. A man of God starts going down the line. Oh, man, Lord, this one... Oh, he's good and strong, yeah. I think mean, God's like, Psh. he can't add two and two and make four. No way. Lord, this one looks smart. Through whose eyes? Mm -mm, he ain't it either. Lord said, ain't none of these them. What? Ain't none of them. Are we talking about the same Jesse? Hey, Pops, guys, these ain't none of them. You got any more? Born or unborn? I mean, you got anything else? Oh. Uh, oh, what's his name? David, I got David. Right. David. Yes, Preach. Come on. Well, where is he? Oh, he's out tending the sheep. Where was everybody else at? See, they was chilled out close to the house where Daddy can reach them. But David was out tending sheep. I said, well, go get him. Somebody go get David. 
David comes walking through the door and a man of God says, that's him. That's him. That's the one that we've been looking for. Amen. So he's anointed king. Amen. We find him going to check on his brothers. The Philistines have come to battle them. We know the story. Big bad Goliath is out there. He's taunting the children of Israel. He's taunting the king of Israel, Saul. David's like, man, what's going on here? Shut your mouth. That's why dad don't let you out. Because you don't know when to keep your mouth shut. Well, what's going on? Listen. Goliath down there in the valley taunting. Send me out a man. Come on. Send me out a man. You bunch of chicken livers. David like, who's going? What do you mean who's going? Ain't nobody going. Nobody's going. I'll go. I'll go. I'll do it. Be quiet. No, I got this. I'll do this. All of a sudden we find him in Saul's tent. Saul said, here, let me put my armor on you. I, I know we just talked about the armor of God this morning, but let me, let me tell you tonight. Let me be pastor just for a moment. You be careful who tries to put their armor on you. Amen. That's good, brother. Come on. Because you see what Saul wanted was Saul wanted both sides to think it was him that was going into battle. He wanted everybody to see the king in the battle. When the king was laid up in the tent with his knees slapping together. Amen. Be careful who puts their armor on you. Amen. Because we're not here to do the work for somebody else, but yet we're here to do the work that God has called us to do. David said, hey, I haven't tested this. I can't. Mm -mm, this ain't mine. He said, I got this though. And so David goes and he conquers Goliath. And right on, just right there, all of a sudden, David is propelled into the limelight. But David didn't live an easy dream. Saul eventually began to chase him for his life. He lived as a vagabond in the caves. Amen. But yet he had those mighty men, but yet through the eyes of greatness. Amen. He said, you know what? I'm still going to be king. I still got a calling. David fell into sin. He made his mistakes, but you know what? Through the eyes of greatness. Amen. When the prophet Nathan came unto him and said, you are the man. He fell on his face. He said, God, I was sinned. Come on, brother. Yeah. I am sin. I am that man. Yes. Yes. Hear me today, saint of God. You may have made your sin. You may have fallen flat on your face. But hear me today, through the eyes of greatness, you can overcome your sin. Through the eyes of greatness, there is a merciful God. Amen. That if you'll just find a place of repentance, if you'll find a place to say, God, I failed you. Through the eyes of greatness, amen, He can move you on. And so it was, God was not finished with David at that point, but yet He continued to move through David. Amen. It's even noted that David was a man after God's own heart, even in the midst of his sin. And when it came to the place that God says, I want a temple built for me, David said, oh, I'll do it. God, you know I love you. God, you know I'll do it. He said, David, I love you too. Oh, you don't know the love that I have for you. But David, you're my champion. You're my hero. You're my man of valor. You're my, my warrior, my champion. I can't, David. You see, you've got blood on your hands, not only the blood of battles, but he forgave David for his sin. But bro, the blood was still on his hands. He found mercy and he found grace, but yet it was still there. You see, skin, sin will scar you. 
And God will forgive you. Amen. But Brother Fleming has a handful of scars today. I'm healed by them. But I still got them as a remembrance. Preach. Come on. He said, David, you can't. You're a bloody man. But I love you. And what I'll do is I'll let you prepare my house. That your son will put it together. And so it is. It's called Solomon's Temple. But let me tell you tonight. Amen. It may be called Solomon's Temple because it was erected under his direction. But it was large part prepared by the hand of David. Amen. Through the eyes of greatness. Even though he was not able to see it erected. He could see it. Amen. Through the hands of God. Oh God, this is going to be so beautiful. God, this is going to be gorgeous. Oh, and your presence will be there for my son and my people. Hallelujah. God, thank you for caring enough for me, for letting me prepare this. Oh, through the eyes of greatness, through the eyes of love, David prepared the temple to be built. Through the eyes of greatness, Moses led the children of Israel. Amen. Though he was not able to bring them into the promised land, God took him to a place and let him look. He said, Moses, you brought them here. And you're not going to be able to enter into the promised land. But David, I'm going to let you see. I mean, Moses, I'm going to let you see through the eyes of greatness what awaits my people. And so it was that Moses was able to see into the promised land. And tonight I read to you of the great man of God, Paul. And we find in 2 Timothy that he is coming to a close in his life. And he says, you know what? I have fought a good fight. I've kept the faith in the course. Tonight I pose a question to you. What do you see through the eyes of greatness? What do you see tonight as you look not through the eyes that God has given you but in prayer and in fasting and in reading your word? What is God showing you that He can do through your hands if you give it all to Him and say, God, I'm not holding anything back. God, I'm giving it all to You. Amen. God, I want to see through the eyes of greatness. I want to see through the eyes of greatness. Amen. I want to see where You're taking me and what I can do. And so it was that Paul said, I fought the good fight of faith. Can you today, can you stand in front of the mirror, can you be honest with God and with yourself, and can you say, I have fought and am in the process of fighting a good fight. Can you overcome adversities and say, I'm not going to let this get me down. But yet I'm trusting in God and I'm looking beyond the problem. I'm looking beyond the situation. I'm looking through the eyes of greatness. Hey man, like Abraham, hey man, I'm looking ahead to a nation. I see a son. I'm holding a son. But I'm looking at a nation. I'm looking at a nation. Not just a son. Hey Amen. Through the eyes of greatness. Hey Amen. Can you see it? Hey Amen. I said earlier, it's not all about numbers. It's not. Hey Amen. But through the eyes of greatness, can you see two or three buses in the parking lot with the church name plastered on them? Through the eyes of greatness. Can you see beyond the place that you're right now? Can you come up and say, Hey, Brother Bumgarner, I, 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 know, I know that Brother Enrique and his wife are already doing outreach, but hey, I want to help them. I, I, I want to drive a bus. I want to do my part. Through the eyes of greatness, can you stretch yourself just a little bit more? I know this is a great church. I, your, your pastor brags on you all the time. And, and I, I'm not here to chastise you in any way, but I'm asking you, can you stretch yourself just a little and say through the eyes of greatness, Amen, I can do a little bit more. 
through the eyes of greatness. I see a better tomorrow for this church. I see a revival, and not only a revival, but a harvest. Yes. Yes. Amen. I apologize. Several times I've gotten off of my notes, but let me say this because it just come to me. Amen. If I'm wrong, Pastor Bumgarner can straighten this out Wednesday night in Bible study, but let me just say how we do it at the POE. For years we've been praying for revival, 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 revival. And let me say it looks good on the banner. It looks good on the little handouts. It looks good when you post them up and place a business revival service, revival service. But let me just say it how I think God has told me. And this is for the POE and it may not apply here. But you know what? You've got to be on fire to be revived. That's good. And if you've never been on fire, then you're never going to be revived. So when we've been praying at the POE, God give us revival, but not only revival, give us harvest. Because you see, when you begin to cast the seed, God gives the increase. When you begin to cast the seed, Amen. And you see those, you see those news just begin to come up through the soil. Amen. Those ones that come in and say, Man, I'm so excited what God is doing. What can I do? Clean the toilets. Great. What are you doing, church? I clean your toilets. See, some of y'all snored your nose when I said that, but guess what? They got to be cleaned. What do you do? I tell you what I do. I wash Brother Bumgarner's truck so it looks good for Sunday morning service. Oh, that ain't nothing. He could go through the drive through He sure could. Amen. But in service for the kingdom, where are you setting your boundaries? In the service for the kingdom, where are you setting your boundaries? Are you looking through the eyes of greatness? Amen. In closing tonight, no greater example of looking through the eyes of greatness than our own Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That we find in the Old Testament that once a year there was a sacrifice to be offered up. The atonement of the sins that they would just be rolled ahead one year. Let me just for a moment, let me speak of my life. I'm so glad that there was a New Testament to the Old Testament. Because I'm afraid that there's not enough 18 wheelers in Wharton County that could haul my sins. But somewhere there was a God in heaven. He said, you know what? We can't just keep rolling this thing ahead because somewhere we've got to pay the piper. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll myself in flesh. That I'm going to step from glory. And from the very beginning, amen, the world will know that it's me. Because I'm going against what nature says is possible. And I'm going to be born of a virgin. What nature teaches us is impossible. It's possible through the one that spoke this great world into existence. And so he robed himself in flesh. Many of us know the story born in a stable in Bethlehem. Raised by a mom and guided by a father, Joseph. But a greater calling all through his life found in the temple after the family had already left Mary and Joseph come back say Jesus we were worried what are you doing at a young age I've been busy about my father's business oh 
that he could have done great things. But he said of his own people that they received him not. Oh, that I could have done great things. You see, through the eyes of greatness, he wanted to move on his own family and his own people. But they would not accept him as the Messiah. He said, Oh, what I could have done. But they received me not. You see, he didn't let that stop him. He said, You know what? I may not be able to reach my family. Hear me tonight because I know there's a lot of family influence in this church. But Jesus Christ himself said, You know what? I may not be able to save all of my family. But I can save somebody. I can witness to somebody. I can open somebody's blinded eyes. I can unstop somebody's dead ears. I can raise somebody's dead brother, dead son from the grave. I may not be able to feed my family, but I can feed somebody's family with five loaves and two fish. I can do it if somebody would let me. And the thousands begin to be fed as he blessed it and broke it. Here tonight, church, you say, well, Brother Fleming, we don't have a whole lot either to Jesus. But he fed the multitudes. And if you can look through the eyes of greatness, amen, and not worry so much about the limitation of these, but look to a God with a full extending hand and say, God, it's not all about me, but I just want to be a vessel. I just want to be a vessel. I just want to be a vessel. That your spirit is poured out of. God, I can feed the multitudes if you bless my hands. Oh, church, that Jesus looked at them before he ascended into heaven and he said, Greater things than I have done will you do church hear me today Jesus Christ himself has given us a promise that greater things will we do through his name what are you saying brother Fleming I'm telling you that we can feed the multitudes day in and day out Amen. And I'm not talking about chips and hot dogs. I'm not talking about hamburgers and watermelon. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the spiritual manna that will get them from here to glory. Amen. What a great spirit of worship that was in this place tonight. But if God's word is true, and I think that we all believe it tonight, amen, then we should come in here every service, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Sunday night, amen, saying, you know what? Somebody's going to get a healing in this house tonight. Oh, oh, there they go. There they go. They're jumping off the deep end, yeah. But when was the last time you've seen a miracle? When was the last time that you seen blinded eyes open? When was the last time that you saw deaf ears unstopped? Hey Amen. When was the last time that you heard the, day, the dumb to talk again? When was the last time that you saw that? You see, what we need to do is we need to start looking through the eyes of greatness and get back to the old time Pentecost. That's right. That's right. Amen. And I'm not preaching directly to this church. I'm talking as a church in large. Amen. We need to get back to the old ways. Amen. We need to get back to the ways that when people come in, they leave different through the power of the Holy Ghost. That when they go into work and their co-workers say, what happened to you? I don't know. I 
went to that church next door to H-E-B and all I can tell you was I went in and I couldn't hear anything. But when I came out, when I came out, Oh, something got a hold of me. What's going on at that church? I tell you what's going on. They're starting to look through the eyes of greatness. They're starting to look through the eyes of Him that created heaven and earth. They're starting to look through the eyes of greatness and not looking at what can be, but what can be through Christ Jesus. Hey Amen. Let's stand all across this sanctuary tonight. Amen. I posed this question to you in the middle of my message. And I want to end tonight posing this question to you once again. Man, are you going to be those that are going to be counted in Hebrews chapter 12? Man, are we going to be part of that great cloud? Are we going to be part of the church of the witnesses? Amen. Are we going to be part of the church of the faithful? Amen. Are we working to the point, amen, that our faces will be etched upon the walls of the faithful? What are they going to say about us if God delays His coming? Let me get personal. Ma'am, what are they going to say about you, sir? What are they going to say about you if God delays His coming and you go by the way of the grave? Is your name going to be etched with those of the faithful? They say, man, I don't know how they did it, but they did it. I, I don't know how they, but man, they reached further than anybody else. They worked harder than anybody else. Their faith was larger than anybody else's. Help, help me tonight. Hey, man, tonight, can you look through the eyes of greatness and say by the help and by the grace of God, I may never meet, I never may make it to Mount Rushmore, but what I will is I will make it to that great cloud. And I will fight the good fight of faith. And I will keep and stay the course. Amen. Tonight, as my wife is pray, playing, amen, I'm going to open these altars tonight. And I know that for my, the great part, I've preached to the church tonight. Amen. But I'm telling you what I feel in the Holy Ghost. I feel that God is not finished with Peace Tabernacle. I believe tonight that there is a greater tomorrow that awaits you. Amen. But there's got to be a place of surrender. There's got to be a place, amen, where we take off the garment. As the high priest would come before the Holy of Holies, oh, they would take off that garment and they would come to God as a servant. Can you come tonight to the altar, friend, as a servant and say, God, let me see through your eyes. God, let me see through your eyes.